Hey everyone, um, it's Froggy Love here. Um, today we're going to talk about tarot cards and tarot card meaning. Um, now, as somebody who has CRS, I can't remember all the meanings for the tarot cards. I do use the cheat sheet a lot of times just so I can remember kind of what the cards represent. Um, but it's your intuition and your understanding of the card that makes reading a book for people a lot easier. Um, there's different spreads that you can use. Um, what I like to do is just hold it, read the cards that are coming out and put them together. I'm not as fast as some people, but I am pretty quick at it. Um, I do have multiple decks, some that I can't use because they're missing cards. And the reason it's important to have all the cards there is because you never know when you're going to need those cards to um, show up. It's always important to have all 72 cards in each deck. Um, it's important to connect to your cards. And part of the way that you're going to connect to your cards is by sleeping with them, constantly playing with them, um, focusing your energy into them. You're not just going to be able to pick up a brand new deck of cards and be like, Oh, I can read them. I mean, there are people that can, but a lot of times you're not going to be able to. Um, you're going to have to sleep with them and prepare them and get them used to you. Always make sure that you cleanse your cards beforehand. Um, the easiest way to cleanse them is through uh, sage or I mean, if you know it's not going to rain, you can leave them outside during the summer. Um, but they just your best way to cleanse your coral cards. And yes, I just realized that I said coral and not tarot. Um, I am using tarot card meanings for a beginner. It's on the Glamour website. As you can see right up here. Um, before you learn the tarot card meeting, you should start with the basic tarot cards. It's a century old practice of using 78 card deck as a tool of divination that's the start or practice of discovering hidden knowledge or using the insights throughout the divine message, tarot cards, interpretations can be used to answer multiple questions by those who have learned and connected with their death, whether you're reading for yourself or others. The symbolism and stories interworn with the tarot decks are meant to be procured as a re reaction from the subconscious in order to make connections that might not have been otherwise. Being otherwise, while tarot cards do not give the reader the ability to see the future, they are a way to reflect, react, and respond accordingly. Um, what are our tarot cards? Um, as you see, I have a deck right here. Tarot cards are, um, they consist of 22 major cards, and then they have the rest of the four major suits, which are um, pentacles, wands, swords, and cups. Um, the minor cards represent fire, air, water, and earth. The um major card is said to represent big life changes changing events while the minors usually represent feeling people feeling 
a day-to-day -day occurrence. What is the history of tarot cards? Tarot cards have been around forever. Um, they originated in Europe in the 15th century, more specific, specifically in Italy. And originally, the deck was called Porti. The cards quickly gained traction throughout many other European countries. After the French conquered Malayne and the Piedmont in 1944, the major Akron previously dubbed Trump cards were custom made and painted for wealthy families, including multiple dust decks that were created for the Visconti family. The oldest surviving cards are the 15 Visconti Borza tarot cards commissioned by Duke Filippo Mario Maria Visconti between 1418 and 1422, which means that people have been learning how to read tarot cards for over 600 years, which is pretty awesome if you really want to think about it. Tarot cards have been around for a very long time. Okay, so what is the difference between tarot and oracle? Tarot cards consist of 78 cards, 22 major, 56 minor, no less, no more. They also need to include four different suits. Um, again, these are the pinnacle swords, cups, and wands. However, some different decks use different representation of the same four elements, which is um, earth, air, fire, and water. Um, tarot will also always include cards traditionally page, knight, queen, and king. Though some decks swap out page for princesses or other minor shifts in the deck, uh, for creative direction, which I do have two different decks that have two different um, minor cards. So if you guys want to see that, I will pull those out. Uh, Oracle cards are used in a similar way that is a tool of self-reflection. There are a few rules. An Oracle deck card can include any number of cards and meanings, which I do have a couple um, Oracle decks, I am working on getting some more. Um, if we scroll down, it says, how can I learn to read tarot? Tarot as a tool of definition is meant to give clarity to the person being read for. That could be either you reading for yourself, you reading for someone else, or someone else reading for you. In order to learn to read tarot, it is important to start by understanding the meaning behind each art. Art, archie type card, much as well as learning words before we start stirring together sentences. Knowing the meaning of the cards individually will guide you as you read them in tarot card spreads. So once again, that's basically saying that um, you got to learn each one of the one each one of the cards before you kind of throw them together in a sentence, figuring the cards that are words, each word creates a sentence, you got to figure out the sentence. Um, how do you ask tarot questions? Call upon your spirit guide of the um, or guardian angel and ask them to give you a message clarity for each question being asked after you ask um 
some specific and non-specific questions are, should I move forward with a new job? I was just offered, or am I really falling in love? Non-specific questions sounds more like, tell me about my current relationship, which if you ever watch TikTok Live, there are a lot of people that are just like, mm, tell me about my relationship. And a matter of fact, I had a reading by Tanya. Um, I can link her Facebook, uh, her YouTube and her TikTok. But I had a reading from Tanya and she, I didn't ask any questions. I just let her go. So she does really good, and she is really good. Um, are you, as you study the tarot, which learning cards represent yes and no within the deck to answer questions? However, you choose to ask the tarot card questions. Just be sure that it's always done with sincere intentions and a level of respect for the guidance you are seeking very true uh don't think of them as a joke honestly um people that think that it's a joke normally the cards ain't gonna um come out very well for them just because sometimes they're <laughs> the cards like playing the cards don't like people um you'll always have free will and the power to change your approach to life whether that continue or diverge from the path you're currently on which the tarot decks is basically a way that you can choose the path that you want to go it will get it will help you choose it um Again, cleaning your tarot cards by uh, cleaning your deck by smoking it, using substantially harvested sage or Palo Centonio, bathing in it in the aura of a cleansing crystal like flare quartet or selenite, um, placing the cards under moonlight, which as long as it's not wet outside, it works. This helps clear the energy away from the previous readings and any influences, not from the pure space as a tool of divination. Tarot cards can absorb energy from the people using it. Um, this is why I always tell people don't touch my damn cards. Uh, because I don't want their energy on the cards because you never know what their energy is really about. Um, but yeah, you can use clear quartet crystals to help, um, clear your cards. I was looking for clear quartet crystal to see if, ah, there it is. Clear quartet is, once again, a clear, and you can literally knock on it and it will put whatever energy in there um tarot card spreads once again there's many we have past present future it's a three card spread um which uh the cards are placed with the left most and first representing the energy from the past, middle representing the currently happening and in the present, and the right most representing the energy of the future, which basically is past, present, future, moving that way. Um, currently, I haven't been paying attention while playing with my cards because I had cards flipped over. Um, you could do the Sasha cross, which um, it's a 10 card spread. Central focus for the person being read. 
what is happening or hindering their focus. And they're kind of placed in the cross. And then, um, okay, so the first two are set is like, it's here and then here, and then the rest are counterclockwise around the center, starting with below, then left, above, and right. So you're going to start down here, and you're going to move left above and um to your right and that blow is subconscious left is recent path uh right or above is the higher path right what lies ahead and then four cards are pulled up the right side of this in the central area from the top to the bottom um, sorry guys, I'm flipping cards. <laughs> then four cards. Okay, so the questioner, this is the person being read for and their energy. Outside energy influences the questions, their hopes and dreams, and the final result. Okay. Um, if you really want to, well, I guess it is important. We can do the uh, what they represent with each zodiac sign. Wands is a fire sign energy. Cups is a water sign energy. Pentacles is an earth sign, and swords are an air. Now, if you want to figure that one out, wands. Um, reason wands are like fire is because a lot of people a lot of people use wood for fire but also um like if you're like doing magic it kind of sparks like a fire at the end of it cups are water you drink from a cup um you have they hold water so pentacles are an earth sign pentacles is money um what money is basically an element from earth metals precious metals that kind of thing swords air sign reason swords is an air sign is because of the simple fact that if you take a sword and you swing it it's air um each zodiac sign can be also be Seen in the major uh, cards, there's a light description between readers and which sign they also they assign to each major card. But these are the discoveries that this person has seen most accurately in the years of professional reading. So they've seen it a lot. Aries, the Emperor, and the Fool. Tori Boris is the Hierophant and the Empress, um, Venus world. Uh, Gemini, the lovers, the high priestess, both showing duality. Cancer, temperance, the chariot, and the moon. Leo is strength, Virgo. Is the hermit secondary is the maiden in the strength? Um, Libra is justice secondary, the emperor, Venus rule. Scar Scorpio is death, Sagittarius is judgment, and temperance. Capricorn is the devil. Um, Aquarius is the star, the hanging man, and Pisces is the moon. Um, I don't know if you guys want to know what is the most powerful card. Uh, each of the 38 cards holds different importance to each person who interprets them. The 22 majors are said to represent the 
big life changing events in um, comparison with the minor 56, which are more indicative of emotions, people, and day to day expressions. For this reason alone, we can say that one of the major is more likely to be objective. The most powerful card, this list below, are the basic tarot card meanings can help you narrow, narrow down your decisions on which one holds the most message. You, um, the Fool, which is the first tarot card of the deck, um, it's the beginning and ending of everything. A quick change that requires a leap of faith. The Fool card sometimes called the idiot represents infinite possibilities and potentials something the other card quotes accurately portray. Um, I have to agree that the full card is, like whenever you're starting on a new journey, the full card is going to pop up, definitely. Uh, strength literally translates in power and inner strength. The strength card is one of the questioners to reach deeply in their into their power reserved and push forward so they can overcome whatever it is that's in their way. It's kind of like if you have a blockage, push it through. Um, the sun, the happiest card in the tarot deck. This represents positivity and optimism without a shadow of doubt, a bright future lies ahead when this card is pulled. Again, um, pretty much whenever you're looking at uh, these cards, you want to you want to take and visualize see what's really around it, like the hermit. The hermit is normally a lone person. Um, Yes, which everybody's scared of this card. Um, but yes is not what you guys think it is. Um, it's a positive beginning. Sometimes new life is born from the ending of something else. Basically, you're ending one path and you're starting a new one. Um, it's not saying you're gonna die. It is saying that you're in a transition that Something's changing and moving forward into a different direction. Um, the world, um, again, um, the world is called, when this card is pulled, know that there is an undeniable sense of wholesome for the questioner. This card sig signals that the cycle has ended and all is well for the question. Basically, you got the whole world in front of you, honey. Don't, don't get held up on one thing. Um, I guess we'll go through all the meanings. I'll just basically bring down real quick so we're not here for a while the fool in the beginning take a leap of faith the magician using all of your past experience creating new features um take and be confident and move forward in your future actions um the high priestess is initiating, gaining insight and power, secrets coming to light, uh, spiritually insight, master head, mysteries ahead, not master ahead, mysteries ahead. Um, basically, use your insight to move forward. Um, the Empress is 
femininity, receiving, creating, pregnancy, nurturing yourself or those around you, or being nurtured and cared for, a new opportunity is that foot abundance. Um, basically, this part is saying that you could be receiving pregnancy, but it also means to nurture yourself with yourself. Um, abundancy, which would be like a money, money's coming in. Um, divine masculinity, stability, security, and this is for the emperor. Whatever the emperor comes, just know that you're secure. You're, you're ambitious, power, authority. Um, <laughs> the hermit. Uh, tradition, marriage, religion, higher education, or learning, seeking guidance from wiser figures or elders in order to complete your task. Uh, don't be afraid to ask God for help. Uh, the lovers, temptation, commitment, balancing, masculine and feminine energy, being at a crossroads and needing to make a clear choice. Partnership. Basically, if this card comes up, it's about lovers um whether you're going to go from boyfriend to uh fiance boyfriend girlfriend to fiance or marriage um it also could be business wise like if you're starting a new partnership in a firm or job the lovers will come out. The chariot moving ahead. Positive or mon monumentum uh, motivation, letting go of past, the past in order to step into the future. Basically, this is telling you that you are on the red path. You just need to let go of the past. Don't let the past hold you back. Um, you got to move forward. Strength. This is basically telling yourself that you have self-sufficiency overcoming temptation and stagnation internal mastery basically this is saying hey you got the power move forward you got the power you're strong enough you can do this um you're gonna overcome whatever it is that you're dealing with the hermit solitude Taking a break from others in order to clearly hear your own inner voice, your strong from society, reflection, self awareness, soul searching, and meditation and retreat. When this card comes forward, you definitely need to make sure that you are paying attention to the um your inner self. Because if you're not meditating and being self aware, you're not able to see. Clearly, real fortune, drastic changes, destiny, fate, good luck coming your way. Uh, things taking a 180 degree turn from where you are currently experiencing or having experienced in the past, aligning with your higher purpose. This, this card is basically saying, hey, just because last year sucked doesn't mean this year is going to. Um, the real fortune is basically saying that last year sucked but we're moving forward to a better position justice fairness legal matters contracts being signed responsibility karma law and order restoring equilibrium to a chaotic situation basically whatever you're going through it's going to come out all right you're going to get your you know contract signed you're going to People are going to get the karma for what they deserve. Law and order. Justice. They're going to get justice. The hang van. Uh, changing their perspective. An ultimate test of surrendering. Breaking old patterns. Seeing this from a new perspective. Letting go. A waiting period. Um, basically what this is saying is, hey, you need to change shit up. Death circle. This is basically the circle of life, death, life. Basically, you're changing 
your prospect uh, into a new territory, uh, a new path, um, the phoenix of the rising ashes. They can't knock you down. You're just gonna rise back up and be a better person. Um, sometimes get it. Stop one path, uh, one action, and start a new one. Temperance, balancing, being restored. Um, basically, this is saying, hey, um, you were hitting the bottom, but now you're, you know, equally now, um, can you be patient? And it building a home the devil the devil it is obligation hideism addiction pattern thoughts and behaviors that need to be controlled living in a state of fear feeling trapped needing to deal with the parts of your subconscious that are ruling your life negatively letting go of the negative the so you definitely need to let go of the negative. There's something negative in your life holding you to where you're at. Addiction. Um, towers. Everybody thinks the tower is a destructive card. It is not a destructive card. It is a sudden destruction. Breaking down old patterns, I guess, kind of is a destruction. And belief systems that no longer serve a public positive purpose, a sudden in being danger, catastrophic events, revelation, ripping everything apart to be able to start over from scratch, leaving the foundation. If you look at the card, the foundation down here is crumbling. Up here, we got a fire, we got the crown, we got people jumping out. Basically, this is saying that somebody's fucking lying to you, that you're in a um, chaotic state and you need to build or start rebuilding your life over. It's not as bad as everybody makes us think it is. It's just saying, hey, either somebody's lying to you because, you know, you got a rocky foundation or you need to rebuild your life. Um, the star keeps the faith, holding on to hope, uh, new fertile grounds, inspiration, believing in a better future, feeling blessed by the universe, fulfilled dreams. This car is a basically saying, hey, <laughs> you got good karma you're coming your way. Uh, the moon is confusion. Everything is not as it seems. Deception. Basically, this card is saying that, like, somebody's being dishonest with you and, or you're being dishonest with yourself and you need to, uh, you need to basically move forward and be it. Start telling the truth. Stop following things blindly. Because whatever it is, there's deception ahead. Uh, the sun is good fortune, positive outcomes, prosperity, happy outcomes, abundance, success, childlike joy. Basically, this card is saying, hey, good things are coming your way. Judgment, uh, resolution resurrection facing a situation head on dealing with karma or past situations basically this is sorting yourself out uh sorting out complex situations um you're gonna have to face the judgment you're gonna have to deal with the past to move on in the future uh the world completion end of the cycle the festival conclusion restoring before starting a new chapter or resting before starting a new chapter a situation coming to a full circle travel endless possibilities this card is basically saying hey you've come all this way it's time to rest before you start a new chapter but 
Um, you've completed this chapter. It's time to move forward. Uh, Ace of Cups. Now we're getting into the minor cards. I, I'll try and be as quick as possible with this. Uh, cups, which associate with the element of water, is more feelings and emotions and heart centered themes. So basically, um, a new beginning in love, creating a deep romantic connection. Um, if you get this card, it's going to predict a baby girl. If you are pregnant, two of cups, which is, if you look at the cups, it's love, soulmate, divine partnership. Um, three of cups is a celebration, and they're all, yeah, cheering on. Four of cups is boredom. Basically, you have all this, all these cups ahead of you, and you're just bored. Uh, you're missing the point. They're straight away, a uh, great awakening, aggressive, always thinner, complex. Um, basically, it means you're stuck. Five of Cups is grief, sorrow, loss, sadness. Now, the reason why is because you got these two, but these ones are silk, and if you notice what colors are silk, it's eat a red. Uh, emotional pain, a good omen that love is waiting you in the future, as two cups are silk left standing. I told you there was something with the two cups. Past life, a six of cups is a past life connection. Uh, childlike joy, some of you returning from your past. Um, seven of clubs is illusion, deception, needing to tip, make a choice. Basically, you're, you gotta choose which path you're gonna go on. Um, Many ideas and inspiration to the point of being overwhelmed. It's almost like when you're cleaning your house. <laughs> you have all these rooms you can start on. But which one do you start on? You start getting a little overwhelmed. Eight of Cups. Leaving a situation behind. You're walking away from it. Nine of Cups. Which wish fulfillment, overindulgence, being greedy, set of long-term relations, family building, home, fairy tale ending, the perfect happy life. Page of cups, expressing true feelings, affection, sweetness, innocence, tenderness, love, letters, romantic message, arriving, Basically, that's saying, hey, love's coming your way. Um, Knight of Cups is a romantic suitor, as you can see. You know, you're knight in shining armor, following your heart. Uh, Queen of Cups is psychic visionary and emotional or loving woman, being prone to deep and overwhelming emotions. I know a lot of people that would pull that. Uh, King of Cups is clarity. So the Queen of Cups is emotionally like chaotic. The King of Cups would be emotionally balanced. You're good to go. You're goofy. Uh, one, they're, um, a symbolic of proactivity and action are, and there are it's going to be the fire again. So, Ace of Wands is a new and passionate beginning, bright future, new business, or family. Could predict a baby boy being conceived and born. Good news. Uh, two is partnership, letting go of the past in order to move forward. Three is manifestation, or seeds that were planted in the past coming to Fruition, basically reaping what you sow. Mary, uh, four of wands is marriage, home building, alignment with your past. As you can see, they're married. 
Five of Wands is competition, argumentative, controversy, bickering, disagreements, conflict. Basically, you're fighting everybody else, but at what point instead of fighting really should be like uh, talking, but it's showing that you're fighting. The six is victory. You're, you're the winner in competition, celebrating or being. Being or feeling admired by others, accomplishment, moment of glory, uh, ignorance, ignorance, arrogance, that took me forever, success and go, go, letting the success go to your head, uh, seven of wands is courage, defending your home, negotiation, defensiveness, um, basically, you're fighting whatever is coming at you. Uh, Eight of Wands is travel. If you really want to think about it, it's basically um, communication, quick change, loyalty, letters or emails coming in that change the course of your life. Um, so basically, if you're not traveling, something's going to come in to change your life. Uh, Nine of Wands is roadblock pressure you kind of feel like you're blocked and delayed with this as you can see all the bonds sit in there and you can't and, but i mean honestly you can get around them uh six and strangers that puts you out of commission basically you, you can't move forward ten of wands is a burden fatigue stress hard workers tv Fin finalizing a harder tedious project, ending a cycle of taking on too much, putting down the obligations and responsibilities if you love to carrying all ten ones. That means and he's just like, ugh, dragging forward. Sounds a lot though. Um courage. Page of ones is courage going on with the journey, enthusiasm, spiritual teachings or educational opportunities to focus no thrilling excitement new ideas basically it's saying hey <laughs> you just come in your way um knight of wands is power passion energy lost adventure you need someone who opens your eyes oh queen of wands is vicious confidence lust a strong-willed woman uh king of wands is authority incoming changes successful it's successful as a purpose for purpose i can't speak future ahead basically it's saying hey authority's coming in your way now we're on to pentacles what pentacles is money pentacles always works with money because it is a earth element um Earthly desires and earthly matters, lifetimes, money, uh, eight of pentacles, new opportunities with work or money, new income or revenue, strength, successful investment, good future, two of pentacles, bringing balance, three of pentacles, building a solid foundation. As you see this, they're all working together to build it. In. Four of pentacles is greed. No, that's not. You can't have it. You're so fear, fearful of losing, unwillingness to share your success or financial gain with people. Um, five of pentacles is feeling left out or rejected. Um, poverty, dark night. Six of pentacles is balance, paying off debt. Basically, you're sharing your wealth, you're moving forward. Seven of Pentacles is investing or investing your time, energy into someone or something. Planning, patience, beginning of something that will grow. Uh, Eight of Pentacles, hard work, appreciation, work or, or employment being the main focus. Learn how, learn now for your your future discipline diligence tedious or monetary basically this is telling you that you need to focus on your future uh nine of 
pentacles is independence, finding your niche. Um, Ten of Pentacles is general wealth, large sums of money. Page of Pentacles, good news arriving, the ability to grow. Uh, Nine of Pentacles is the reliability, stability, patience, slow, slow forward movements in the right direction. Basically, it's saying, hey, we have, we're moving forward in this complex direction. Queen of Pentacles is a motherly figure, um, nutrition, a high paying job or promotion. Um, King, of, King of Pentacles is mature and grounded energy, building an empire. Ace of Wolf Swords, which stores is air. Um, this is going to be your mental thought process. Uh, Ace of Swords is new contract being signed, um, new thoughts or ideas or arriving that change the course of your life. Two of Swords is confusion, uh, being at a crossroads, indecisive. Three of Swords is heartbreak, break up, despair. I should see. Four of Swords is needing the rest before the universe makes you rest. Um, basically, you need to take a break from life. Five Swords is cowardliness in complex pride, uh, drive loss, defeat, unnecessary arguments. Six of Swords is moving on to better things for people, healing, moving forward, leaving. Um, a tumultuous past behind you. Basically, you're moving forward. You're taking. You're not bringing the past with you. Uh, seven of Swords is deception. Somebody's lying to you, stabbing you in the back. Eight of Swords is victimization, anxiety, being caught in the middle and causing unnecessary suffering. Your thoughts are out of control, embarrassing, slander. Basically, that just that that card represents like. People are lying about you, and your own anxiety is making you things worse. Um, nine of Swords is sleepless night, mental anguish, insomnia, despair, anxiety, fear, stressful environment. Ah! Basically, as you see, it's nighttime. He has all these swords surrounding him, and he just wants to go to bed. But he can't go to bed because of his own mental thoughts. Um, Ten of Swords is the end of a cycle. Betrayal, being stabbed in the back. Um, complete re, re nation of a situation. Basically, the worst has now passed. There, it does stab you in the back. Move forward. Uh, page of Swords is buying some. Uh, stalking social media or being stalked, gossip, clarity, rebellion, exam, or studying for something, immaturity, needing to grow up. Basically, uh, this is YouTube stalkers of our lives, um, or Facebook stalkers. Uh, Night of Swords is an aggressive figure rushing to conclusions, coming in as quickly as one leaves. Knee jerking reaction. This is basically when you jump to conclusions. This is saying, hey, you're jumping to conclusions. It might not be as bad as you think it is. Um, Queen of Swords, a uh, cold figure, someone who has a hard outer shell that is extremely sensitive underneath it all, divorce, logic, righteousness, bitterness. Basically saying, hey, who? Stop being a dick to people. Or at the end of a relationship, divorce is coming ahead. Um, Knight of Swords is an intelligent figure, seriousness, regal behavior, reaching beyond conduction, control over one's emotions. Basically, this is you're able to feel. 
think clearly. You see the plan ahead of you. And that is all for that. Um, check is that website. Um, I wanted to go over the meanings of the cards because everybody has different meanings. But in that deck, it, that's basically what they mean. I mean, even in my paperwork, it says the same thing. There are people that do read reverse and there are people that do not read reverse. They just read forward. Um, I'm not going through all of that tonight. That will be different. I hope that the meaning can help you because like I'm somebody who has DRS. I can't remember anything. So I always have to, okay, what does this card mean? And I have to go back and look and constantly about it. Um, but whenever you do connect with your cards, make sure that you're, um, you're not wearing yourself out. Um, I know a lot of people that uh, will be like, oh, you know how to read cards? Can I get a free tarot reading? Can I get a free tarot reading? Give me a free tarot reading. I want a free tarot reading. Hey, can you read this? Sometimes you have to say no, and that's like any part of divination. You have to say no. Um, you cannot just always be there at people's beck and calls. You've got to take your own mental health into consideration. Um, I personally don't read for myself, um, but I know a lot of people who do read for themselves. Um, and if you do read, make sure you ask permission because just reading for somebody and being like, hey, I did a reading for you, they might not want to know. And sometimes your reading ain't what they're focusing on. So make sure that, like, you really have permission. And as always, ask our Angel Michael and your spirit guides to be there with you while you do it. I thank you all for coming. I hope you like this. Um, like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you leave a comment and tell me what you would like to learn about next. I'm trying to do more learning things because as somebody who started from a nowhere, um, I've had to learn all this stuff by myself and it's not always easy. I hope you guys, I hope you guys have a great day.